Right, the other day I showed how I made a brass oil lamp out of an old brass um, goblet and that one turned out really well and you would have seen these before I made this um, brass doorknob oil lamp and then I made one out of a centre section of a brass table lamp and then this large one I made out of a brass candlestick, a large brass candlestick, singular one that I had. And I was very pleased the way these have turned out. And I've said before, you can actually make lovely oil lamps out of anything that has a container type shape. And I was very pleased the other day because I went into my local charity shop and I found a lovely heavy brass jug um, that's what I think it is, or it might be just an ornamental oil lamp without any actual working parts. And I bought that one and brought it home, and I've made the ultimate oil lamp now in my collection so far, I think. It's the Magic Genie type oil lamp. And I'd like to um, just give a quick talk through um, of how I actually made this one today rather than showing it being made because I didn't actually film it when I was making it and I'd like to show you a substance that can be used in engineering to actually fill in gaps which is fuel resistant plus it's also so strong that you can actually mix it up and use it and actually thread it and now I'll just show you a close up of this lamp and basically how I made it So what I bought in the charity shop is this part here, um, I'm not sure whether it was a jug or an ornamental oil lamp without any uh, parts or working parts on it. It did have a taller um, type stand on it which was very lightweight and um, this part here I made out of an old plumbing fitting, cut off. Um, shape to actually fit the end here. I cleaned up the end um, with the uh, wire brushes on my Dremel or whatever and I soldered this into the um, end of the spout here. Um, there was a certain amount of gaps left in that and they would have leaked if I'd left them. Um, it's a right angled fitting so um, like I say I soldered it in the end here and then I used a substance which is called JB Weld. And that's this substance here. They've made this new type now. This is Quick Weld. It goes off in six minutes and then you leave it for um, several hours to set um, solid. But it's a two part substance which you mix together a white substance and a black um, substance which is the hardener. You mix that together and then you can actually fill in any holes and make a nice um, actual um, end like I have on here. I kept building it up until I got the shape the same as the actual um, jug piece here. When it was dried I used wet and dry um, and emery just to clean it off and blend it in and it turned out really nice and sealed it up completely and like I say it's fuel resistant so it won't get affected by the um, oil that you use in the lamp and then I just used the plumbing fitting cap for the top here I put a, a piece of brass on the top, I showed how I did it in the um, lamp, um, one of the other lamp uh, videos, but what you do is um, just get a piece of sheet brass, um, clean it up, um, stick it onto the, or put the um, actual cap onto that and solder it on the inside. And then cut around with a set of um, tin snips roughly around it and then you can actually put this in the jaws on the lathe and then turn down 
so that it blends in with the um, top of the uh, plumbing fitting. And I'll put a couple of O-rings in the top there as well so that when I um, put this one on it actually seals it up and even if it's tipped um, it won't leak. And I'd just like to say that this um, JB Weld is really professional uh, quality type um, substance. It has a strength of 3127 PSI. Um, when it's hardened, um, it's four to six hours to actually harden it, like I say, six minutes to go off, and then um, to fully harden it's four to six hours. When it's fully hardened, you can actually drill it and tap it. So it's a brilliant thing for repairing things if you've got a broken thread on something. And like I say, it's fuel resistant and also um, I think it can take heat up to 300 um, degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this here doesn't actually get hot, uh, obviously because the heat's rising. Um, when I felt it um, after burning the lamp for some time it just gets warm to touch but it doesn't actually get hot so it's perfect for this end here. And I always have a couple of packs of this in stock in my engineering um, shop. You can buy it on eBay or many other places and like I say it's really well worth having some of this. I then made the top here on the lathe and that was a push fit into the actual top. There was um, a hole which was um, probably about, must be about two inches in diameter so I turned a disc of brass which fitted that nicely and I did put that in with um, Loctite 63A and there were some slight gaps around here where the um, actual top of the um, jug here wasn't level. So again, I filled in with JB weld around this um, disc and that one sealed that one up perfectly and it doesn't look too bad. I've sanded it off with some um, wet and dry and emery and that doesn't look too bad as it is. But I was thinking of painting a, a red stripe around that one with some fuel resistant paint to make it look a little bit better but um, whether I need to do that or not I don't know. But the actual top here was just made out of a piece of hexagon um, brass and I used my ball turning attachment to make this brass ball and put a knurl on the um, outer diameter of that one. Screwed that one onto the um, brass hexagon piece here with a six millimeter um, grub screw loctited together and then I've got the quarter inch BSP thread uh, that I make um, normally for these lamps I either use uh, quarter inch BSP or one eighth BSP I use quarter inch BSP on this one so that I have um, a wide enough diameter to, to fill the lamp up and then I've used a uh, quarter inch BSP doughty seal to seal that one and that one can also be used as a handle to actually carry the oil lamp. I know it's got one on the back here, but it's quite a heavy lamp now. It's um, just about one and a quarter kgs in weight, so it's a heavy lamp. And it's much nicer to actually hold it by the ball to actually carry it. The original stand was like a bell-shaped stand and it made the um, oil lamp stand tall. It was very unstable because it was a lightweight um, stand and it also had some nasty dents in it. So what I did with that one was sawed it off uh, with a hacksaw and then I made this heavy brass disc up out of a bar end again uh, which the original stand would push into with some Loctite 638 and I also put a 6mm stud right up through the um, brass um, oil lamp. It's a nice thick brass, so I was able to thread that one, put the stud in, and then I threaded this one through with 6mm um, thread and screwed the whole lot together with Loctite 638. And that's one of the things to do when you're making oil lamps, is to make sure that they're nice and heavy and stable. With the original um, stand, when I put this um, end on here, there was a tendency for it to tip. It could easily tip it if it was knocked, 
for now it's nice and heavy and stable and that's one of the things that you really must uh, bear in mind when you're actually making oil lamps another thing that I've done with this one is that I've made up a wick holder out of brass which just drops into the um, brass plumbing fitting here you can see there that it's loose if I wanted to I could pull that out and that's to facilitate um, the ease of actually putting a new wick in I can actually lift that one out and thread the wick down into the chamber and then put the collar on the wick at the end like I did with this one and if you're making oil lamps like this one it's most important again to have the wick and the flame higher at the end than the actual oil reservoir um, chamber and that way it draws the fuel up the wick and it doesn't actually flood the wick if you had it lower or level it must be higher when you actually look at this one side view you can see that it tips up and obviously with the plumbing fitting it's a lot higher anyway than the actual chamber so I'm really pleased the way this one turned out I only made it really because this one was um, so thick it's at least a millimeter thick um, wall thickness on the actual um, main part here maybe um, two millimeter it was heavy in the first place but it's turned out to be a lovely heavy lamp that's lovely and stable and like I said I'm really pleased with that and now I shall look for some other things to make other oil lamps out of